Live from downtown Bakersfield, 2380C News at 6 starts now. Good evening. Back to back massive earthquakes rocking communities in eastern Kern County last week. And while the cleanup continues, many still have questions and concerns. Today, the healing town of Toronto had their first town hall meeting where local, state, and federal officials addressed a community who's been waiting for answers and resources. 23ABC's Bayan Wang attending that meeting and has more on the aid still flowing to that area. A sense of relief is what several Trona residents described to me after several days of having to travel to a whole different county just to get basic necessities like food and water. And even then, not everybody had transportation. At today's town hall meeting, however, several were grateful for the abundance of resources, but still wanted to know why resources took so long. I haven't had water since Friday. Like, we want answers and we can't get them. I do appreciate the support. We didn't have it at first. I don't think they realized how bad Trona got hit. The small town of Trona didn't just get hit. They were at the epicenter for two of the largest earthquakes in recent years. Those time frames, it's an aftershock. It's an aftershock. You're okay. San Bernardino Fire Department officials say over 100 structures have been damaged, over a dozen properties red flagged, but that's not the worst part. They have uh, three uh, large water storage tank of 1.7 million gallons, and two of those three tanks were completely destroyed, and the, the third one can only be halfway filled, and all were drained at the time of the incident. The impact still a reality for many. We need water in this town. They just said there's water hooked up, but I don't have water to my house in Argus. I think that sometimes we're a forgotten town out here. Forgotten, a notion uttered by numerous residents. Just because we're small, don't forget about us, please. <laughs> like we're here and we do need help. The county's emergency manager says difficult obstacles played a crucial role in their response time. This happened on a holiday weekend and to get resources it was very difficult because a lot of those resources were rented out already. The porta potties, the showers, they're all rented out to events that were happening in different communities. Uh, the other thing, we had to go to Arizona for shower, showers because all the showers were used up and we had to get uh, showers that were compliant to handicapped people. All those were factors in the response out here to, to get Trona back up and, and back to safe. On Friday, FEMA will be coming to town to do a full assessment of all the different damage reports by several different agencies so that they could assess just how much funding is needed here. In Trona, Bayon Wang, 23ABC, connecting you. Bayon, thanks for that story. Congressman Kevin McCarthy is hoping to bring some relief to Ridgecrest. Following the quakes last week, he proposed an amendment that would authorize $100 million to fast track relief and rebuilding efforts to military bases damaged by the seismic activity. That would include Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake, Edwards Air Force Base, and Fort Irwin. Currently, China Lake is non-mission capable and non-essential personnel have been evacuated following the extensive damage caused by the earthquakes and aftershock. Meanwhile, Vice President Mike Pence is here in California, and while touring the Central Valley with State Senator Shannon Grove, the Vice President had this message for the people impacted by those recent quakes. Rich Crest Trona strong. Yeah. The Vice President arriving in California this morning, Pence and his wife Karen attending multiple events in the Central Valley today. Pence had lunch with donors at Harris Ranch in Kalinga. He was also invited to Friedos and Sons Farms just out, outside Lemoor, where he was the special guest for a trade event to discuss an update to the North American Free Trade Agreement proposed by President Trump. The second lady addressing military spouses at the Naval Air Station in Lemoor. The discussion centered around employment opportunities for military spouses, a cause for which she launched an awareness campaign last year. The Ridgecrest Police Department announcing there will be a local assistance center set up at the Kerr-McGee Education Center this week. The LAC, as it's being called, will be at the center from Thursday, July 11th through Saturday, July 13th. Kerr-McGee located at 100 West California Avenue in Ridgecrest. The LAC available from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day, providing individuals, families, and business owners access to disaster assistance programs and services Services. There'll also be state, county, and local agencies there to assist and provide information to everyone affected by the earthquakes. A veterinary team of volunteers has set up inside the Red Cross shelter at the Kerr-McGee Center. The volunteers will be treating any animals for not just injuries, but pets who may be suffering from stress due to the earthquakes. They'll be able to prescribe and dispense appropriate sedatives for animals. If you're in need of a house call or farm visit, you can call 310-808-5943 to schedule. 
unusual one. And of course, we're going to have continuing coverage of the earthquakes on our website, turn to 23.com. There we have pictures and videos of the damage, information on recovery efforts, details about being prepared for possible disasters and more. You can also stay informed through our mobile and tablet app. If you don't have our app, you can download it for free. You can also stay up to date through our streaming platforms, Roku, Apple TV and Amazon Alexa. Today, a Kern County jury found the Taft Union High School District negligent surrounding a school shooting from 2013. This was the first phase of the civil trial. The second phase will determine damages. Back in January 2013, Bo Cleveland, who was 16 at the time of the shooting, was sitting in class when Brian Oliver walked into the classroom opening fire, striking Cleveland in the chest. Cleveland survived the attack and has since undergone at least 22 surgeries. Cleveland's attorney, Daniel Rodriguez, filing the lawsuit against the Taft Union High School District in April 2013. Rodriguez arguing the district failed to keep students safe despite several warning signs about gunman Brian Oliver's behavior. Rodriguez also seeking damages to cover Cleveland's medical bills. The Kern County Public Health Services Department warning people tonight who visit Lake Isabella to be cautious of active algae blooms there when visiting Hanning Flat and Kissack Cove. Health officials say they've recently obtained water samples from eight locations in Lake Isabella and two of those locations indicating the presence of potentially harmful blue-green algae at the cautionary level. That's the lowest of the three advisory levels. Medical experts report that the bacteria is capable of producing toxins which have the potential to harm people, pets, wildlife, or livestock. Dogs and children likely the most affected because of their smaller size, increased potential to ingest water, and the tendency to stay in the water for longer periods that, according to health officials, exposure can cause eye irritation, skin rash, mouth ulcers, vomiting, diarrhea, and cold or flu-like symptoms. In other news, it's been six months since the deadliest and most destructive wildfire in California history. The town of Paradise still has a long road ahead in their recovery, and one Bakersfield native is taking part in the effort to help the community rebuild. Long-term recovery in this case means probably 15 to 20 years. Talking with people and being at community meetings and listening in on the process and hearing what the residents want and how they want to rebuild. Megan Kurtz says she learned to be a good neighbor growing up in Bakersfield, and it's that neighborly spirit that's been important for the town of Paradise as they start over. We'll have that story coming up later tonight on the now Bakersfield at 7 o'clock. We continue to track earthquakes that are rocking the Mojave Desert. In just the past 24 hours, more than 90 earthquakes that were at a magnitude of 2.5 or higher happened in this region. Actually, the strongest was a 4.5 just after 5 o'clock this afternoon. And this is something that we will continue to track over the next several days. As for temperatures, well, they are warmer than what we were feeling this time yesterday. Still technically below seasonal, but it is all going to be changing as we head into the weekend. So 93 degrees right now here in Bakersfield, 85 up in Lake Isabella and 76 down in Fraser Park. But if you want to get out of this heat and head over to the Fox Theater, Friends, the musical parody begins at 730 tonight. So temperatures still going to be in the 90s with those sunny skies, but it will be ending right around 830, dropping down into the 80s. I have more details on what you can expect later this week coming up next. The Sheriff's Office is asking for the community's help in finding a shoplifting suspect that hit a local business in Oildale. The shoplifting happened on July 3rd at about 1015 in the morning. The suspect entered the Rite Aid at 100 China Grade Loop in Oildale. The suspect then allegedly selected several items from the makeup aisle and left the store without paying. He then got on a bicycle and took off. If anyone has any information regarding the identity of who this person is, you're asked to call KCSO at 661-322-4040. Green Lawn Cemetery on Panama Lane is one step closer to having a pet cemetery on site. The Board of Zoning recommended moving forward with a conditional use permit at Green Lawn that would allow for the creation of a pet cemetery for urns covering more than 2,200 square feet. The board recommends the City Council approve the permit that would see in total 15,000 square feet being used for new facilities for embalming, monument services, and equipment storage. New details tonight. Walmart officials confirming to 23ABC News today that the new Walmart 
Walmart in Tehachapi set to open on August 7th. Meanwhile, the Walmart is still looking to fill 200 new positions in Tehachapi. Those 200 jobs will make the big box store the second largest employer in Tehachapi. And the hiring team says the hunt for those employees is underway. The store has been setting up a hiring office across the street from where the new store is being built on Tehachapi Boulevard. Officials say they need every position from their new Walmart from entry level all the way up to management, including greeters, cashiers, stackers, and both part-time and full-time workers. We have a link on how to apply for those positions available right now on our website. Turn to 23.com. A traffic alert for you tonight. An overnight closure in southwest Bakersfield slowing down your commute home or when you go to work tomorrow. The westbound west side parkway on ramp from Truxton Avenue is closed tonight between uh, right around uh, 9 o'clock until 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. The closures are for construction and during the time Truxton Avenue will be closed in both directions between the westbound west side parkway on ramp and commercial way. Drivers who use the routes highly encouraged to take alternate areas uh, through that part of town. Well, coming up in sports, another runner moving on from the CSUB basketball team, plus Team USA celebrating their recent World Cup win in New York. Allison? And temperatures will be heating up significantly as we head into the weekend. I'll let you know when you can expect the triple digits coming up next. Welcome back to 23 ABC Sports. Now 86 days away. Who's counting? <laughs> the Bakersfield Condors, they are 86 days away from getting back on the ice, and today they unveiled their full schedule for next season, which begins at home with opening weekend on Friday, October 4th against San Diego, and then on Saturday they'll have a game October 5th against the Ontario Reign. And here we have the newly released schedule for the 2019 to 2020 season. We're taking a look at how many times they're going to see their opponents. For the Reign, they'll see them 12 times. The San Jose Barracuda 12 times as well as the Stockton Heat and the Colorado Eagles and San Diego Goals. They will meet those two teams eight times a piece. And then for some lesser matchups, the Tucson Roadrunners, they'll see the Condors eight games as well. And then Grand Rapids with four games and Condors will meet against the Iowa Wild with four games as well. We're getting excited for that season. Obviously, after such a historic year, we're hoping that this next season brings a lot more success to the Condors. Well, former Bakersfield high guard Jeremiah Dickerson, he is leaving his city to pursue another university. The redshirt freshman was a walk on at CSUB and saw limited minutes the previous season after sitting out with an injury the year before. Dickerson is headed now to the Colorado Christian University, a Division II school just minutes outside of Denver, where Dickerson should see more time on the floor. Well, after cruising to a back-to-back -back World Cup title in France, the United States women's national team got to cruise through the streets of New York City today to celebrate their fourth overall World Cup championship. And for many years, this team has tried to prove their dominance here in America and across the world in the sport of soccer. And this World Cup victory allowed them to do just that. And today they got to soak up in the praise and celebrations with thousands celebrating alongside them there in New York City. And of course, this team is known not only for their skills on the field, but also for their voices off of it, something they really push for during this World Cup run as they try to shine a brighter light on women's sports. Um, thank you all so much. I think that we have been known as America's favorite soccer team. But from here on out, we'll just be known as America's team. So, uh, yeah, Dallas Cowboys move on over. Alex Morgan said it. This is America's team now. We hope to see they gain or garner a little more attention outside of the World Cup. So hopefully all of this celebration helps with that. Well, we know the team that started it all. That was the 99ers, and it's been 20 years since Brandi Chastain scored the iconic penalty kick to seal the Women's World Cup, and it's often referred to as one of the greatest moments in U.S. sports history. Well, today, Brandi and the rest of the 1999 U.S. Women's National Team will get a statue to honor the team and their victory at the Rose Bowl. The statue will reside outside of Pasadena's iconic Rose Bowl Stadium, the site of the famous game, and a moment that inspired many will now be immortalized forever. Ooh, that is so cool. Cool. I I'm love like, that. I was not a soccer <laughs> fan. I'm still not a huge soccer fan, mm -hmm. but I remember that moment. Like that's yes. that's incredible that it's being, you know, I immortalized know. now. It is this current team. They're going to the Rose Bowl. 
for September. That, I, I didn't know about that, oh, but okay. that, yeah. I, I think I read somewhere they're actually going for an event down there. So. Cool. Well, they should. Yeah. I mean, they got to yeah. see the statue. That's what started the whole legacy. There yeah. you go. Keep <laughs> the parade <laughs> going. Yep. 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 All right, Carrie. Thanks. Let's bring in 23 ABC's Allison Gargiro. Talk about our weather forecast because while well, soccer is heating up, it is on fire, really. Oh, I yeah. Mean, so are we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's going to be feeling like that as we head into the weekend. Today, temperatures were still below seasonal, but warmer than what we were feeling this time yesterday. A high of 94 degrees today. That average, though, well, we are going to be surpassing that as we head into the next several days. And that's all thanks to our latest high pressure system that is moving over the four corners. That is going to continue to be build. So the warming trend started today, continuing for your Thursday. Temperatures will be rising and air quality will slowly be worsening. And then Friday, that's when we could be seeing the triple digits here in the valley. So as for wind speeds, well, they are picking up just slightly in our mountain communities as well as down into the desert 23 mile per hour winds in Jawbone Canyon, but this is not a strong enough winds to help clear out any of that haze that we're seeing here in the valley. So air quality is still going to be in the moderate range with an AQI of 97. Again, that's just a few points away from unhealthy for sensitive groups. So just make sure that you are taking breaks if you are staying out doors for long periods of time. Stay hydrated and make sure to keep applying that sunscreen because look at these temperatures tomorrow. I have 99 degrees here in Bakersfield and we're going to be seeing those upper 90s across the valley. 97 as a high in Taft up in the Kernver Valley. Well, they are going to be in those mid to upper 90s as well. 87 in Tehachapi and 79 as a high in Pine Mountain Club and then our desert cities. Really almost all of the cities will be warming up to the triple digits. I have 99 degrees in Mojave tomorrow. 106 in Ridgecrest and well these temperatures again only going to continue to warm up again the triple digits on Friday a high of 102 106 on Saturday that is going to be the warmest day of the week and then a slight cool down on the way beginning on Sunday still reaching the triple digits as we head into early next week but then we will be in those upper 90s on Tuesday and Wednesday and it looks like this time next week we could finally be back to those near seasonal temperatures the Kern River Valley though it's going to be reaching the triple digits by Saturday, a high of 101 degrees to Hatch and Fraser Park, slowly warming up to the 90s. So, yes, soccer is heating up and so <laughs> are we. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, not a good time to play soccer here. Not probably. outside. <laughs> Maybe inside with yeah. AC. There you not go. too bad. Stay in the AC. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, still ahead. Phoebe Ross, Rachel, Joey, Monica, and Chandler are taking the stage here in Bakersfield. Details on the Friends musical debuting tonight when 23 ABC News at 6 returns. Welcome back this evening. Your favorite friends will be in town. Ross, Rachel, Monica, Chandler, Phoebe and Joey are set to hit the stage of the Fox Theater in Friends, the parody musical. Doors open at 630, just a few minutes away. The show starts at 730. Tickets start at $23 and they are still available on Ticketfly.com or at the Fox Theater. The show is described as a comedic musical that lovingly pokes fun at your favorite group of 20 something year old New Yorkers. The show is recommended for mature audiences, so Leave the kids at home. Maybe they'll answer how they were able to pay for that uh, lofty New York apartment no, on a barista yeah. salary. Seriously, yeah. that's the question I <laughs> still have. Does not have. make sense. Yeah, and a, a sparing <laughs> actor there. Yeah. yeah how exactly. does that work out? Hmm. Who knows? Maybe they'll answer. Questions for Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let us know if they do. <laughs> but that is going to be a great way to get out of the heat this evening because temperatures will only continue to rise later this week. Welcome back. Pretty nice day today, but Saturday uh, it's going to catch up with us. Yeah, you are going to want to be either in the AC or in a pool because temperatures are going to be warming up significantly. But just before the break, we were talking about Friends, the musical parody, a great way to beat the heat because temperatures are going to be in the 90s by the time that starts at 730. Then by the time you're walking out into those 80s, but high pressure is building over the four corners. That means we are going to be dry, hazy and just downright hot this weekend. So by Friday, here in the valley, temperatures will be reaching the triple digits, a high of 102. And then Saturday, the warmest day of the week, a high of 106. <laughs> Unfortunately, doesn't stick around too long. I mean, still the triple digits, but that 106 is not good. Just cram that right on the weekend there, Allison. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'll just stay in bed that whole day. <laughs> yeah, okay. Start again Sunday. Yeah. We'll see you at 7. Good night.